Hey, greetings everyone. In this slide presentation, we'll be considering the use of the Jacobian matrix in robotics and robot simulation. We'll be looking at its life applications, its relevance, and also in this slide, we'll be looking at the calculations of Jacobian matrix in robot manipulation, its translation, and its movement. Alright, in this slide, we'll be introducing the Jacobian matrix with regards to robotics, robot simulation, and by definition, the Jacobian matrix is a mathematical tool that relates the joint velocities of the system to the velocity of its in effector. I could say this is a formal definition. But as we progress in the slide, we'll be exploring more of this, still in the context of the definition we just had. If we can look at the slide critically, we'll see, we could see an image that gives us a clear vista of what a robotic working system could look like. So we'll be attempting a little explanation from the image we have and also the definition we just had. Looking at the image, we could see the joints, we could see the end effector, that as the end effector works, the joint moves, the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, and also the end point, which is the end effector, which is the load carrier, as it could be explained. So from the Jacobian matrix and the definition we just had about it, you could see that the Jacobian matrix helps us relates the joint velocities, its movement, to that of the end effector. So this is fundamental in controlling and understanding the robot motion, especially in tasks that requires precise movement and manipulation. In the previous slide, we just considered the introduction by definition. And here we have it mathematically. The Jacobian matrix J can be represented thus x with a dot equal to j theta theta with a dot. Looking at the equation we have where x with a dot represents the end vector velocity, linear or angular, in whatever position and orientation it moves. Then j with a theta represents the Jacobian matrix and theta represents the joint velocity. All right. Looking at the right side of the slide, we could see a typical Jacobian matrix showing us a mathematical representation of the relationship between the joint velocities and the Keresian velocity, where theta represents the joint spaces. Also, we can be seen in the diagram below the joint spaces. We could see from point origin 0, joint 1, we could see theta 1. We could see theta 2, we could see joint 1, joint 2, link 1, link 2, and the end effect of it at different positions and orientations of movement. So this is exactly what the Jacobian matrix does in robotics, helping us in calculating all of these movements, precise movements, as we saw in the previous slide. So this can really help us with precision when making our design. Being able to relate the end effector with the joint movements. I tell you, this is really amazing. All right, in the slide, we'll be considering the way the Jacobian matrix helps determine ways the movement of the joints. Each joint translates into the movement of the end effector in the Cartesian space. All right. From the image we have before us on the slide, the first image by the left, we could see from the origin, the forces acting on the joints, joint Q1, joint Q2, down to the end effector. How those forces on each joint translates to the other, even down to the end effector. On the second image, is just an illustration of what is happening. Why is this forces acts on the joints? Actually, the translation from the point 
from the point of origin Absalom translates from joint 1 to joint 2 and then to the end effect of which the Jacobian matrix gives us a mathematical explanation to this or rather a mathematical formula so when given your joint velocities the above formula as we can see in the example can be used to calculate the end effectors linear velocity all right in this slide we could also see that jacobian matrix is also relevant in calculating the rotational movement of the robotic arm it also relates the joint velocities to the rotational velocity of the end factor when it has to do with velocity here in the formula we could see from the examples that we now introduce the angular velocity with the dots omega dots so in the formula that we can use to make this calculation we can see from the example on the slide omega dots stands for the angular velocity of the end factor where jr theta now represents the rotation of each part represented in the jacobian matrix All right here we talk about the manipulation Manipulation in robotics can be referred to the ability of a robot to interact with and modify its environment through physical interaction. You know, this can be included or explained in tasks like grasping and lifting of objects, as we can see in the image before us, moving objects from one location to another. So in this case, the Jacobian matrix J relates the joint topics to the forces and the moments at the end factor through the following equations where f is the transpose of the joint matrix multiplied by the top that is when it has to do with force at the different ori orientations orientation x orientation y and orientation z also shown in the image when it has to do with movement the same equation applies but the force now is translated to movement where we have m to be equal to joint matrix the transpose of the joint matrix multiplied by the top wave. so essentially essentially we can say that the jacobian matrix also helps in calculating the manipulation of the robotic arm when it has to interact with its environment especially when there is a load an interaction needs to occur between the Jacobian the, between the arm and the and the load. So we have our formula before us where F is first at the end effector, JT theta represents the transpose of the Jacobian matrix, and our small t here represents the top wave applied at the joints, it joints. All right, here we can see some of the practical applications of the Jacobian matrix in robot simulation. It's essential in the model of robots kinematics and dynamics. So here we can say that kinematics is the study of the motion of objects without considering the forces or the masses. In robotics, kinematics deals with the movement of joints and links calculating the positions and the orientation of the end factor. Also, dynamics implies the study of the motions of objects, considering forces, masses, and energies. And also in robotics, dynamics deals with the interaction between the robot and his environment, calculating the forces, the torques, and the energies. It also helps in performing motion simulations and trajectory plans. Testing and optimizing the control of algorithm, algorithms. We can also see that from the points below. Forward kinematics, which I've explained earlier. Inverse kinematics, motion planning and control. I've just made mention of that. Collision detection and avoidance. First and top wave calculations. These are some of the practical applications of the Jacobian matrix when it has to do with robot simulation. On the last slide, I'd like to draw a conclusion. All 
Alright, on the last slide here, I'd like to draw a conclusion on this presentation. Basically, try to highlight some of the things we've discussed previously. So, we have the summary before us. First point, the Jacobian matrix is a fundamental tool in robotics for calculating and controlling the translation, rotation, and manipulations of the robotic arm, even the end effector. And understanding and utilizing the Jacobian matrix would allow us for precise control and optimization of our robotic environments and movements also. And by leveraging on the Jacobian matrix in robotic simulation, it will enable the development and testing of complex robotic systems, ensuring efficient and accurate performance in real-world applications. Thank you so much for following through, and I hope you find this presentation resourceful and educative. Thank you. See you next time.